Hi guys, my name is Angel, and as usual, I am your host for Of Blood, Bones, and Water. Today's topic is titled Dealing with Grief, and this is such a special episode to me because, you know, I've lost someone as well, and I wanted to be able to connect with someone else on a deeper level. So, my guest for today is called Oduakomo. Hi. And I brought her here because... I feel like I'll give you guys more perspective. So I felt like Uduak was important for this topic because a lot of us know about the Ini Umoran case and, you know, the role that she played in it. So Uduak, thank you so much for gracing us with your amazing presence. And I hope moving forward, this podcast and all of this is going to give people, you know, more insights yeah. about us. Thank you. <laughs> So, tell us about yourself. My name is Umo Uduak, and I'm a business developer as well as sales specialist. So, how are you, Uduak? You know, before we get into the topic, because it's a very heavy topic. So, how are you? How are you feeling? Is this something that you're ready for? Yeah. Breathing exercises? Yeah, Let's do it. Yeah. You're sure? Okay, so, um, how did you meet any? Okay. She was my colleague in school and we became friends in year two because year one I was still trying to figure out who be my friend, who I'm going to be close to and all. And how I met her was we were in class and she's this bright student that if anybody's looking forward to leaving the class, she wants to stay back Mm -hmm. in the sense that if they're asking a question, and she would want to prolong the questions. So I realized that she is very intelligent. And we started talking. The day we started talking was when I was craving for a particular food. And I just made mention that I would want to have a fang soup. So she she heard me and she said, okay, that is a place she knows that she would want us to go eat. And it's a popular place in my campus, uh, Santa Villa. So she took me there. I got the food. I was thinking I was going to be the one to pay for it. Okay. But she insisted that she brought me here, so she's going to pay for it. So that's how we became friends. Yeah, what uni did you guys, did you both go to? University of Oyo. And you guys were friends from year two? Year two, yes. Up until you graduated yeah. and after that? Yeah, we're still friends. We, we had so much thing that we planned to do after school but because of the strike and everything affected us i was back to putakot so she was still in new york but with that we're still keeping in touch okay so at the time of her disappearance and murder you were in putakot and she was in okay as at that time i was with her after her last birthday because i was to go to lagos for a job so the evening after her birthday i went back Okay, two days after her birthday, I was to travel to Lagos. So I went to her place on Sunday. I left my house um, key and my credentials because since she's the one that is in Uyo, I can't just leave my house mm-hmm. and then leave my things inside. So I had to take my credentials and my house key. I went to her place and I told her I'll be traveling. Before then, we had, we've had that conversation. Yeah. So I told her I'm leaving my things with her. And in case she wants to go to my place, she have access to my key. So she could go there. So it was in the evening. I didn't sleep at her place because it was far from the park. I had to go somewhere that is close to the park so I could easily meet up with my first boss. So that was the last day. I, that you both saw? Yeah, I both saw my friend. I saw my friend rather. Okay. So can you walk us through the events, you know, that took place? We can, you know, breathe through it. Obviously, like I said, this is going to be a very somewhat heavy podcast but i was on twitter live when it was happening i remember seeing your accounts and you know i was just like oh my god another missing person and it blew up uh i was never a twitter person at first she made me join twitter because yeah. if she reads any funny stuff she would want to read out to me if she sees anything funny she would want to show it to me so she was the one that made me join twitter and i was just there for the fun aspect 
not until the day that um she told me she was going for a job interview okay before then she asked me that she's looking for a job that she's thinking of putting it out there on twitter so as a friend i told her okay go ahead because this platform is somewhere that if you're looking for a job and you put it out if you're lucky enough you could get something and because of that i just told her okay go ahead since she wants to put it out so mm-hmm. i she did so the day she called me that she was going for a job interview, I was in Lagos. We had a conversation. She said she would want to go, but she doesn't have the money for that. So I had few, um, I had some amount of money in my account. So I had to tell her, okay, if you're going, I will only give you two k, urgent two k for your transportation. So she said she's going to, that will be enough. So I sent her the money as her transportation fee. And I told her, I instructed her as a friend, please turn on your location, jokingly. And then also let someone know that this is where you're going. Because it was just me she was having that conversation with. And Mm -hmm. I know that she would have left the house without not informing her siblings. So I told her that and she forwarded the person's number that has been calling her for the interview to her sister. And then as she was going, she w- she was also trying to reach out to me that the distance and all that. I was really engrossed that day that I didn't take note of the time frame. So she was heading to the job interview. She was also letting me know that the distance is far and all that. So I was at the end of encouraging her, just go check it out. If it's not going to be well paid, you don't have to go that far. So she, she kept going to a point that she had to text me that this place is actually far. And because I was engrossed, I didn't check the time frame. Like I said, I had to tell her, if that place is that far, you can go back. So she now said that she's already there. Okay. 20 minutes later, she sent a two-second voice note that I played and I didn't hear what she was saying. So this is someone that I was talking to every interval. Mm-hmm. So I had to quickly call her because I was in the kitchen cooking. And thankfully, my phone was close to me. So I had to call her to know if she wanted to say something to me. And I, when I called her that first time, I had struggles and she screamed. So the call ended. I, I was a bit scared, but I tried to call her back to confirm what really happened. And she didn't pick. That was when I perceived that something is actually wrong. So I kept calling like three times. She didn't pick. I had to quickly call the sister to let her, to confirm if she had told that she was going to a particular place. And the sister said yes, that she texted her the number of the person that has been calling her for the interview and the address. So I told her to call that number or forward it to me because I've been trying to call her and this is what happened i explained everything to the sister she forwarded the number to me and immediately i called he picked but he didn't say anything the next minute he hung up on me and then i called back the number was switched off so at that point you knew something something was wrong. was wrong but before i contacted the sister i i had to just tweet it on twitter that this is what is happening and i'm not close to where my friend is so i was just thinking it's probably she's still in the interview because for just 20 minutes she got there and she let me know that she has yeah. arrived and then reaching out to her she's not picking and plus the um two second voice that she sent so i just put it out there and then the next minute it went viral and that's when i knew that something is wrong with my friend because this is someone i was communicating with not until she got there 20 minutes later i can't reach her I've been calling her, she's not picking. I called the number that she sent to her sister and he's not picking. So I had to tell them that something is actually wrong. Mm -hmm. And because the post went viral, people came to my inbox, yeah, to my DM to tell me that a thing like this has happened. So I had to let them know that, okay, this is few persons, two ladies, I'm not going to mention their names, that... A thing like this happened at the same location, at, at the same place with this same guy. So I was able to get the information about the location. With the same guy? With the same guy, yes. So the same guy that had, or that murdered any, had done this had, before? Yeah, had done that. But fortunately for them, he he used them in terms of blackmailing them for because he took pictures of their naked body and then be extorting money from them mm-hmm. so they were able to 
leave the place without them being hurt aside from being raped and all that but so from those two persons that i had the information the rightful information about this particular guy and the place he took them to yeah if i remember correctly i can remember um i think him interacting on twitter yeah the thing is when my friend posted that um job that she was seeking for a job yeah she had a lot of people that gave her offer and she she also posted this on Gigi. But I wasn't aware of that. Okay. But it was later that I realized that she also made that same post on Twitter on Gigi. So the guy reached out to my friend. Because there are some comments that was deleted under my friend's post after it went viral that a friend was missing. Yeah. So people that commented under it about giving her a job deleted some contacts, some comments. So I was able to also stress a particular person, which is same Udwa Kakpan that commented under my friend's post that he has a job for her. And that was the main reason why she had to go. And he didn't give her exact location. He just told her, for instance, a certain junction. Yeah. So she was thinking it's just that junction, not knowing that when she get there, she's going to take a bike. Because if she had known I'm sure she wouldn't have gone. And if she had known the full address, she wouldn't, I wouldn't have allowed her to go. So he just gave her a location that people are staying. And then at the same time, when she got there, he had to tell her to take bike to a certain place that we can't find her if anything goes wrong. So I, I just, yeah, that's what happened. That's pretty heavy to obviously have to deal with. And, you know, I I am really sorry that you went through that. Honestly, I can't even imagine the anxiety during that day, which obviously is leading to my next question. So now you had figured out that something was wrong. What was your thought process like? I was trying to picture the position she was and what was really happening with her at that moment because... Th- when I called first, after she had sent me that for, um, two second voice note, I heard her screaming. So when she didn't pick, when I called her back, I was trying to think of what would have happened to her and then picture the position she is. And I couldn't just try to tell my mind that this is what is happening to my friend. I was still staying positive that, okay, I think it's just for the meantime that she's going to be found. So at that point, I didn't want to be negative in my thoughts. But I was just trying to picture what would happen if she doesn't come back. Okay. And, you know, I, I don't exactly remember how the events went, but I know, you know, you went from making a post to Udwak Apan being a suspect to all of a sudden, all of all of these images and pictures, I think they caught the guy. I don't know how, and I don't remember how that went. But I think, you know, like when he was caught, um, you know, all these pictures started coming out. There were so many theories. And I think what struck me the most was the uncompleted building that all of these clothes and shoes were in. And, you know, like... Obviously, there were also, I, I remember correctly, um, the shallow graves and everything. So, obviously, if, if, if you don't want to answer this question, that's also fine as well. Like, what, what was that like, honestly, dealing with it and the, you know, the anxiety? What were you going through from your point of view? Because we can't get, you know... Um, in his point of view, what was your point of view? How were you feeling? You know, At that point when because she stayed like two days. It happened on Thursday in the evening. Sat Friday we didn't get to hear from her. Saturday the same thing. It was on Sunday morning that I consoled myself like, okay, let me go to church first and probably pray for my friend to come back because. I it was just happening and I didn't understand what was going on because this is someone I was talking to. She wasn't sick. She was fine. 
And the morning she got there, we didn't get to hear from her again in the evening. So on Sunday morning that I was on my way to church because I was having a whole lot of thoughts in my head, but I was still trying to not to overthink it that something as bad has happened to my friend. Was when I got to church, I was about entering the church when my phone rang and the sister said that this is what happened. At that point, I didn't even know if I was still here or I'm hearing a different news because she went there healthy. She wasn't sick. What really happened? How did it do it? I didn't just know how to react. So, you know, the the thing about grief is we spend, like, so much time. And, and it's not our fault, honestly. It's a human thing. We spend so much time wishing that it was something that we could have done to prevent the death of people that we loved. You know, even even when they die from normal causes, like when someone is like ill or someone is old and they pass away. We spend so much time thinking, well, what could I have done? What, sh- what, 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 what route should, should we have taken differently? And that is something that I struggled with, you know, cause when I was 19, I, that was my first boyfriend. That was the first person that I could even remember falling in love with you know so i had spent half of my life running away from being in situations where i had to be affectionate so this was someone i met when i was like 18 and i was just like who is this guy you know because he he became more than my boyfriend he became my friend i if i had any problems i went from moving from my normal friends just to him i'll tell him everything and when he died i spent so much time questioning myself what could i have done were there signs that i didn't see what should i have done differently is is that something you struggled with yes uh when i lost my friend there are days i i feel i didn't deserve to be in that kitchen because why would i be cooking when my friend was going for a job interview that i didn't take note of the time i keep wishing i wasn't even here for the job because at the end of the day i didn't even work for two months and it was stressful so i keep wishing i was in uyo with her the day she was going for the interview and then probably something would have come up probably i would have ended up telling her let's go somewhere else or let's do a thing like this and she would she would want to ignore that interview that day or something i keep wishing i was able to take note of my time i keep wishing i was able to tell her okay she needed money for transportation i don't have this money can you do this tomorrow i keep wishing a whole lot of things and it's a huge struggle to me some days, even till now, that if I start thinking about it, I wish most days I didn't send her the money at the same time she needed it. I keep wishing the, that day that she called me, she was going for the interview. I was not cooking. I was just in the parlor, probably not doing anything for me to know the time she had left for the interview and when she was still on the road for me to tell her, it's too long, you can't go back. I wish I had done that, but... It just happened so fast that I didn't take note of the time frame and then everything ended the way it it happened. Yeah, but, you know, there's absolutely nothing because you're a human being, you know. There's absolutely nothing you could have done. And and that's the thing with, with grief. Like, we spend so much time thinking, what could I have done differently? You know, should I have told them don't do this? Should I have told them don't do that? Should I have told them do this? And and that's the thing that that's I feel like guilt is is the core principle with grief, thinking that there was something that you could have done to save that person. When in reality, we're all human beings, and we can not even save ourselves because you know when she everything just boiled down to me telling her go ahead, because before she wanted to make the post of looking for a job, she asked me, 
I yeah, did. because she was her friend. I told she, her to go ahead. And then the day for the interview, she called me that there's this person that is calling her, asking if she can use Microsoft and Excel. And I know how smart she is. So I was like, you can handle it. And then before she came up with the transportation of a thing that she doesn't have much money on her, I had to send her. So it's boils down to me telling her, go ahead. No, that's that's your guilt, or like the guilt that comes with grief. That's that's what is speaking, because you you didn't plan for that to happen to your friend. Obviously, you love your friend, and you advise her to your non your knowledge. You know, it could have been any of us. It could have been the other way. It could have been that you know you needed a job, and Ini had told you, you know what, well, go forward and put this because none of us plan for things bad things to happen to us you know we don't we don't sit especially not for people we love we don't sit and plan oh yes let me tell my friend to do this thing you know so i really hope that one day you you find that healing because it is so important for us to heal through the phase that comes with guilt and i'm sorry your friend Ini had to go through that because even i I was so upset because I think we had just gone through another case of a girl. I don't remember her name and I'm, I'm and I hate that I don't, but I've kind of desensitized myself to these things. I remember a girl that he had, you know, killed in a church and we had just gone through that. And then, you know, in it, in it happened and there were so many conspiracy theories, you know, there were so many things going on online because everybody was just trying their best to figure out you know, what to do. So, how angry were you? You know, especially towards, because me, I know I was angry. I was livid. I was even more annoyed that he had the audacity to be under people's comments, texting like a normal person, trying to deviate the crowd from. So, when I found out that the person was on Twitter interacting with people, I was angry well how angry were you to Uduak Apan and shame I, on him yeah I was so angry even till day there, there are days I wake up with so much hatred in my heart but Valid. I just, yeah that I have to tell myself okay you don't have to feel this way it has already happened just try to let go there are days I wake up with so much hatred with the fact that she needed a job she wasn't going for anything more than seeking for how she wasn't even expecting much. At least she'd be able for her to be leaving the house daily to whenever um they send our name to the Senate for us to leave for NYC. Just something to keep her busy. She didn't deserve to die because she didn't do anything. She 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 wasn't going out at night for me to say she was risking her life. She wasn't doing any other thing that people could say, okay, she didn't listen to the aspect of tell someone where you are going or um, turn on your location. Like I said, she did everything right. right. Like I told her, she listened. She did those things. And then getting there, it ended up her being raped. I, had it been he actually raped her and then let her go, yeah, to, to the, I'm sure she would not forget the incident, but at least she would still be alive. But why rape someone and then do that kind of a thing to someone? So most days I just have this thought, I wish I was still in New York and a thing like that happened that day. I'm sure I would have gone. I would have gone to look for my friend, first of all. Let me see her first before I could decide on what to do to Oduak. I don't have people for to fight for me or something. But at least I I can't speak for my friend. I could do something like trying to find her on my own. But I couldn't do that because I was far away. And it was not something I could just move the next day. I didn't have plans for that. So most days I woke up with pains and hatred in my heart. Thinking that this person doesn't deserve to live. Because you kill someone that didn't do anything wrong to you she didn't offend you from anywhere she has never insulted you you guys have never had any misunderstanding so why kill her just because she was looking for a job so it hurts me most days and it pains me and i get angry most days at the same time that i wasn't there to help my friend out because if i had if i was in new york 
when she texted me and everything happened like it happened, I'm sure I would have found my way down to where he was staying to at least raise an alarm that this is what is going on in the particular building. But I couldn't do that. So because I couldn't do that, I, I feel pain. And it hurt me that it just happened and I was far away from her. Again, um, those are all, you know, valid feelings. Of course you'll be angry. Like, this random... And even if the person was not random, this man from nowhere came and snatched the life. Not only did he snatch the life, he raped your friend. And I, c I can't even imagine. So anger is very valid. Everybody was angry. I'm sure not as much as you, not as much as her family. Anger is a valid emotion. Guilt, however, is something that I feel everyone that has lost someone has to unlearn. You know, it's something I'm trying to unlearn. Because the question that I ask myself, or I used to ask myself at the time was, what could I possibly have done? Did I, could I have envisioned that, you know, I would lose my boyfriend? No. We don't wake up thinking something bad is going to happen. And that's the thing about human beings. Every day we wake up, we go outside and work for what we have to work for, for our families to survive. We're not thinking, you know, when I step outside, I could die. And because we're not thinking that, you're, you were obviously not thinking that for your friend as well. What you were thinking was, you know what, I'm excited that my friend has found a job offer and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to support her. But, but grief and logic don't go together. We don't, we don't try to rationalize our thoughts. So, you know, there's nothing you could have done. And it's not you. It's on the stupid man, and I'm going to use stupid, and vile and weird and disgusting man that took advantage of Ini and killed her. And I could, from what you told me about her, I could tell that, you know, she was bright and she was happy and she deserved, more importantly, she de deserved to leave. Yeah. And fight for her future. You know, so how would you want the audience to remember Ini? Because now she's Ini Omarin that was raped and murdered. You know, what lights would you have loved Ini to have been in if Ini was going to blow up? I I know her for certain because when he was testifying, he said um he used stabilizer on her like he said i know my friend wouldn't have yielded immediately to what he wanted to do with her she must have struggled she must have tried to fight back that i didn't come here for this i came for a job it's either you offer me a job or you let me go so if you're offering me any other thing apart from the job i'm not gonna take it so i know her as someone that she might have tried to fight back and tell them you're not having your way. So the only thing I hold on to the fact that she was a strong person. She had her own flaws. She had her own troubles. But she's someone that is very determined. And she, she's a very strong person. That's the only thing I can say. She was a very strong person. So in the midst of everything that happened, the only thing I can hold on to was the fact that I know she didn't just heal in. She tried to fight back. She tried to to do what was best for her. That I didn't come here for this, so you can't have it. So maybe in the process of that, it resulted to what we heard later. But I can only hold on to the fact that she's... A fighter. Yeah. And that's how you like the audience to remember yeah. her as someone that fought. So how has the murder and rape of your friend affected your mental health and your perspective on human beings? Yeah, after that incident for a while, I was just on my own. At that point, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I I have other friends that was trying to look out for me, but I shut everybody out for a while. I didn't want to talk to anyone at that point because 
I couldn't explain the situation I was in. I usually hear the word depression. I didn't know what it feels like until I lost my friend. I had lost someone very dear to me. I had lost my mom. I was able to move out from that situation because I saw what she went through. She was sick. So I saw what she went through. I was with her the day she passed on. So I was able to console myself for a few things because since I was with her, I noticed the struggle she went through, the pain she went through. So when I finally lost her, it was like a consolation that at least she's at peace. She doesn't have to go through those pains. So I was able to move on the next day and though it still affects me most days, but it, it's the only thing I hold on to that she's not going through those pains. She's not suffering at the moment. But someone that I know that was very healthy, she wasn't sick, then died in such a way, hurts more. And I was thinking depression is just some few words, but I never knew someone I can actually walk into because I'm a very happy person. But all of a sudden, ever since I lost my friend, there are days I, I go sad and it makes me look like a saddest, which I'm not. So the the... That's when I experienced depression, what it is. I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to tell anybody what I'm going through. There are days that I want to have a proper conversation with someone, but I don't want to talk to with, I don't want to talk with someone that I know. I would just order Uber and probably cry inside the Uber. And then there's this particular Uber driver that listened to me. So he was the only one I could talk to at that point. So whenever I want to feel like saying my mind, I would just call him. And then he will come after a while. I will tell him everything I feel like. So at that point, I didn't, I wasn't giving room to anybody. And then what the, the thought of, um, the thought I had with someone is that I can't trust anyone anymore. It's very difficult for me. In as much as I, I try to give someone a second chance or a second um, thought that, okay, this person is not this person. At least everybody differs. But it has a hold on me that I, I, I easily don't trust anyone. And, yeah, I easily don't trust anyone. So it affected me to that end. What, what, what are your coping mechanisms, you know? Yeah, the fact that I'm where nobody knows me, because one of the reasons why I left where I was staying to a particular place that nobody knows me, let me just go to a different place so I won't have to start thinking of if I was in this position, I would want this person to be close to me. So the only thing that is helping me right now is the fact that I'm somewhere very far from everybody that knows me. So that's the only thing I could fall back to, me being alone. I don't have to put anything on anybody to make anybody feel that you have um, you have to help me out in a certain way. So I wouldn't want anybody around me in my space. So coming down here is just the only way I can cope with myself right now. Well, I hope and honestly pray that it gets better yeah you know this is a difficult difficult topic for me i know it's a diff difficult topic for you as well but you know what i'm going to leave you with is that you are deserving of healing and peace and happiness and Neither you nor your friend deserved what you went through and what you are currently still going through. And also letting you know that you you couldn't have, like even if you were in Uyo, I don't think you could have done anything to help her. That's, that, that is not your burden to carry. The burden is on Uduak Apan. And most importantly, I am hoping that you find happiness somewhere in the midst of the chaos. And I hope it gets better. And I'm sending you hugs that I will eventually give you at the end of this talk show. Um... Yeah. 
this this was or this is was is a very tough you know i can tell most of my podcasts and talk shows are usually lively but this this is a deep topic and i'm glad i got to see your perspective and most importantly i'm glad that you honored me to come and share your story and i love you even though i don't really know you i genuinely do and i hope you get better so udrak thank you so much for coming thank you too. this is a box in appreciation and we thank god that's all i can say so guys we have gone through this journey with Uduak and the loss of her friend and it was obviously a very heavy podcast you could tell from the energy um to everyone out there that is dealing with the loss of someone by any circumstances be it suicide murder natural causes illnesses i hope you know we all heal that is what is important healing and i hope that even if it hurts on some days that we continue to persevere and have the strength to go through each day and i hope for anyone feeling guilty wishing that there was something that they could have done. I hope you guys find healing, knowing that we can't even save ourselves. We wake up as regular human beings, hoping for the best. Sometimes we don't even hope for the best. We just wake up and go about our day. So, you know, I hope everybody finds healing. And I hope, you know, so much hope. Omo. Bye, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this podcast. Bye.